Beekeeping Vlog, connect to learn more, don't forget to like, share and subscribe channel. Sewer, I guess it's a sewer drain line. It actually it looks like an irrit irrigation drain line to me. Let me see. Yeah, it actually says irrigation control valves. So that's good. Um, anyway, so we're going to pull it off and see if we can move these guys into a new home. A lot of times the hive this small you can actually um, find the queen on the outside because I don't know if you can see them but there are eggs out there there's just so little space and they want to expand so bad that she's laying in every single cell that doesn't have food or in it already so just kind of looking around here kind of run to the other side of the hive, just trying to get away from it. You also see a couple of these guys digging their heads down in there and they're trying to eat a little bit of honey. Just in case there really is a fire, they'll have, a, they'll have some food to table with them when they flee it.
So as I'm driving these off of there, I'm just kind of looking around for the queen. Uh, and then it's going to fit into a frame. And in the next, well, this little comb, probably in the next day, the, uh, the bees will already have attached it to the frame and they'll chew through the rubber bands and drag them out of the hive. They, they realize that they're in the way of these cells that they've built. So it's kind of a, a foreign object. So let's stick that in there. kind of lightly dusting them. Got a view stuck on my blade. Yesterday and actually found the queen on the very first comb, comb that I found, or the very first comb on the outside. That was super convenient. By the time I was done, the, uh, the bees were already moving into the box because the queen was in there, even without all the, the brood to help the smell spread around. So the, the cells that are underneath the rubber bands, if they're open, then whatever's in them is probably not going to make it because the bees can't get to them in order to uh, take care of the babies. Um, but the, the capped ones might be able to um, might be able to survive just because they don't need to be fed anymore, they're just maturing. So if they hatch before, or they, they hatch maybe within a day or so of when the bees pull off the rubber bands, then they'll just come right on out.
you look on there, over to the left-hand side, I don't know if the, uh, the zoom is good enough on this or not, but you can see the, uh, the eggs and then kind of the, the larval progression. So it's like eggs out here, and then these are larvae, these white things, all throughout here. And this one's about ready to get capped, really. T-shirts. I ended up putting on this long sleeve shirt. I'm really regretting it. It is hot today. It's only gonna get worse. It's still 11, 11, 15 here. And I gotta go up to Miami and get another one done. Excuse me kind of tap the bees and they'll just move right out of the way. Which is good because I don't want to squish them. Scooch. Can you get out? You can get out, get out. Why don't you wave your stinger at me? Probably means that she's on this back side here and the, and the clump of bees. So I gotta be very careful when I'm cutting this. Not to put the two parts here and get them. I've got this little pre-built piece of comb that the bees in another hive built. And because this one is so small, I'm just going to gently press these two together and use this one to hold up this new piece and hopefully keep it pretty straight. And the, uh, the bees should fix it. <laughs> That's what they do. A lot of times with these really tiny pieces, they're not really worth saving just because they tend to fall over or go at an angle, and then the bees say, Ah, it's already at an angle. We'll just build the rest of the comb like that. So you end up having, instead of having a straight up and down comb, one that goes off at an angle and joins to the bar next to it. Then you gotta cut it and re rubber band it, it's a big pain. So, we'll try and avoid that. Alright. So, that was our, our massive four comb hive. Now, let's take a look at these guys. You can see they're festooning on the bottom which means that they're all just kind of hanging off each other. So at this point, what I could do is just shake this whole thing right onto the hive. Um, and odds are that I would get the queen down in there and the rest of these guys would move in. But I want to give it a second and see if I can spot her. Because if I can cage her, then the rest of these guys will definitely move in. If I don't cage her and I shake it, she might try and fly around. And then I basically have to chase a swarm all over the neighborhood. So 
if I can avoid that by just looking at this uh, at this for half a second and saying, oh, there's the queen. All right, find the queen. She is super visible right now. See her big butt right there? And she's hiding under some workers. They're, uh, they don't like lay light very much once they start laying. Which is good, because otherwise they might go outside and get eaten by something. So, without further ado... Oh, I lost her. Come back, little queen. Let me cage you. I should have just caged her to begin with. Where'd she go? Come on, I know she's in here somewhere. So, what I'm going to do now, instead, is just start kind of scooping these bees out. Um, just to kind of limit the amount of bees that I have to look at and compare and see about which one is the queen. Shaken, they realize that they've they've lost the hive, and they're they're saying, "Hey, everybody, let's meet over here." Which usually means that they still have the queen, um, but I've definitely seen it while the queen is flying. If a, a good mass starts building up, to try and attract the queen. I don't take pictures of queens. <laughs> While I'm doing that, she's running away and hiding. Oh, 
so she is right on the edge here. Hope you can see this. I don't know. Gently, gently, gently scoop her up. And I missed her. There she is. So many edges in this box. Apparently you can just grab them by either the back leg or the wing without damaging them. But I've never been terribly confident in that. I would much rather try and scoop her up with this. Ah, she's on the outside. So there you go, that's the queen, and I'm just going to rubber band her into a frame. Stick the frame in the middle of the hive, and I am out of here. Over the course of the day, the, uh, the workers... Oh, actually, let me go ahead and show you this. Alright, so the, the queen is out of the box, but these workers are all standing here on the edge fanning saying, hey, Queenie, this is home, smell this, come over here. So they'll attract her back to the hive because she doesn't have, um, she was probably already mated before they swarmed, so her orientation flights were all at her old hive, so she really doesn't know where this hive is in comparison to anything. So they have to rely on that, or she has to rely on that smell to get back to them. So that is it. Yeah. At this point, the comb's out of this box. Um, you can see the bees have already pretty much stopped going in there. The uh, the bees that are right here, I'm just gonna dump on top. And you see, they aren't really trying to fly away. A few are, but for the most part, they're just saying, "Oh, yeah, that's right. This smells good. This smells like it should," and they're just going right on in. So, pop a box on top and that'll be it.